All right, so this is the deck list we're playing tonight. It's slightly different than the one from last night. The only major difference is that we've cut a pot of desires to include Trivergate Oath. Trivergate Oath is a critical card in the combo if you're looking to play around the Droplets or the Darker Luna more, which is the only way to break the end board of this deck. What does Oath do? Well, first of all, Oath in Graveyard, if you control at least one of each Beast, Beast Warrior, and Winged Beast Monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target one face-up spell or trap card your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn. Why is this good? Well, for starters, most of the time, Forbidden Droplet will not be pitching a trap card, which means you can respond with Oath from the graveyard to negate the Forbidden Droplet. Dark Rulin Amor says you cannot respond with monster effects to the activation of Dark Rulin Amor. What can you do? You can negate it with Oath by banishing the Oath from the graveyard, just as you would the droplets, to negate the effect, saving all of your monsters. Because as we showed yesterday, and in parts one and two, the end board of this deck is at minimum six degrees of interruption. Most decks cannot play through two or three, but to play through six is borderline impossible, even for this deck in the mirror match. So the only way you will lose with this deck, again, is Forbidden Droplet, Dark Rule and Amor, or if you have to play into the max C. Now, we play the Dark Rule and Amor so that if you have someone hit you with max C, you have versatility to set cards. You want to end your turn right then and there. The reality is you can't play through max C. There's no taking the max C challenge with this deck. You simply can't do it. It doesn't happen. It never will. That's the reality of this. But we also don't want to play cards to counter the maxi because it hurts the consistency. A lot of people are going to say, why aren't you playing Crossout Designator? The reality is, it's another three cards that we have to play that we have to see in the opening hand to make use out of. We don't want to play that way because this is a dedicated go first deck that unfortunately we already have to make accounts for to play going second because we can't control it because it's a coin flip meta. Okay? So, what do we do? We play as many birds as possible because that's our primary, primary combo starter. And then we play the hand traps that are necessary. The hand traps that are necessary are obviously Max C. It's a turn ender. And Ash Blossom because it is the single most versatile card in this game. So, without further ado, we're going to get started here. I have the deck list here in the Twitch stream. You can see it over here on the left side. I will also post this later tonight. You will see this alongside the video on demand when that goes live. So tonight's focus is about prioritizing the Oath combo. The same combo as last night, but in the process off the kit, you are sending Trivergate Oath to the graveyard. It's the same way you would send the Rendezvous, but Oath is simply better than the Rendezvous because it plays around the Dark Ruler no more. Or the Forbidden Droplet. We are going first. This is great. Hopefully we can showcase the combo. Remember, I'm going to talk you through the whole combo. I'm also going to talk you through what I see the opponent doing. Got a good eye for this. Been playing this game for a long time at a very competitive level. There we go. We look at our opening hand. This is crazy. This opening hand is perfect. It's exactly what we want. We've got the bird call. We've got the one for one. So what do we do to start? We're going to activate bird call. We are going to search the turquoise warbler. Probably going to be met with an ash here. That's fine. If that's the case, then we go one for one pitching the DD crow to summon out the turquoise warbler anyway. Actually, we don't even need to summon out the Turquoise Warbler. And we get hit with a Max C. See, this is why we play Ash Blossom. We're going to chain. He's now down two cards. He can't activate Max C again. He also cannot Ash us. And we are in full driver's seat. We're actually not going to summon the Turquoise Warbler here off the one-for-one. One. What we're going to do is we're going to pitch the DD Crow off the one-for-one, one, summon out Nerval. We're going to go through our combo a little differently than we were last night. But we're still going to end on solid board. You may not be able to Oath here, though. That's the catch. So. Summon out the Nerval. Nerval hit the field. We're going to normal summon the Cobalt Sparrow. I'm going to reset Starling. We're going to go plus two on this. So restart Starling will summon itself. We're not going to choose to activate the effect. There's no point. Because otherwise you would just boost it. Okay, detach here. Make sure you detach the Nerval. The Resolite Starling will add a level 1 Winged Beast Monster. What do we want to add here? We want to add the Sapphire Swallow. Wait, we want to add the... Hmm. This, is a, this is a tricky spot. Um, hmm. 
we actually want to add the wagtail here. So we're gonna add wagtail. Nerval will search. We're gonna grab Karis because we've already used our normal summon. Here's the hand. Karis effect is going to pitch the celestial wagtail. This board is gonna look a we little weird from last night. Not gonna be the ideal hand. Fortunately, we have to play through a lot of stuff here. So, Karis effect. What do we have in graveyard? Not a whole lot to work with, but we do have cards. We're going to go Karis Effect here. We're going to banish two cards. We're going to banish Edie Crow, and we're going to banish the Nerval. Boom, boom. We are then going to choose to summon out the... We summon out the Double Dragon. Let's pass on this. I think that's the best play here. We could go Ferris Jeep, but we're not going to, unless we wanted to go Appaloosa, which would be a three material Appaloosa. It's not really in our benefit to do so, but Double Dragon Lords will at least be able to bounce the Karis back to hand for the following turn. So, can we play with one bounce to three cards? I think we can. We could also go some Morgue if we wanted to. Coming out the Apex AV and play that way. Don't think that's the right call, though, but. I think we're safe in this. What we could also do if we wanted to be a little cheeky is we could also go Shurag here, summon the Shurag. If Shurag leaves the field for any reason, we would get a search off that. But we're going to pass through the Double Dragon Lords, hoping to bounce the Karis. Actually, hoping to send the Recite Starling to play through. Again, not an ideal hand. We had to play through two hand traps. He's going to hit us with Lightning Storm. It's the reality of what we're living with here. And it hurts. There's no way to play around that. Gonna have the lightning storm regardless. We have to summon a monster and attack this because of the link monster. And now we're hoping to top deck. Barrel Canary here wins us the game. Cannot draw cards. We're gonna see what he's gonna add. He's probably banishing six cards here. Potter Prosperity Reflect Reveal top six cards in your hand. Choose to add one. You can no longer draw. And we take no damage. So we know he's playing Virtual World. Revealing GG's. Two chase. Swing longs. Gonna have to set one. And he's got no mouse in hand. Drop a turn, pass back to us. What do we have? Ash Blossom. Not necessarily playing through this. We're gonna pass on this. Keep the Ash Blossom. It'll negate anything he has in hand for following turn. At the moment, we know he has no monster that he can use. Virtual World is a deck, requires you to target face up cards with the monsters. You then send the opposite of the card you targeted to the graveyard. So he has the Lili. What are we going to do here? We're going to negate with the Ash Blossom. Lili will not be able to resolve. It's going to stay in the hand. He cannot Foolish Burial either off the Lili. Every single monster in the Virtual World deck is susceptible to Ash Blossom. He's clearly got something here because he would have been able to chain. It's likely a set Chuche. Got the GG. I think we still lose here, so we're going to go game two. We're going to go next. No way you play through that. Get two monsters in this case. Doesn't really make a difference. The Lily would have sent two, would have sent the Nian and another card. He's going to use the GG there to send the Quinglong, pitch the Lily, search the Lulu, and we are in trouble because we were playing under a lovely Shen Shen, which would banish all of our cards. Not an ideal opening hand, what we had there. We had some plays, but it wasn't enough. He clearly had more than us because he opened the Lightning Storm, which is an unfortunate top deck, but you have to, unfortunately, bite the bullet in these best of ones. An ideal opening hand here. We're going to be able to revolt. We're not going to revolt. Sorry, Oath. But we're not going to use Oath here because we need to get to the Nerval. So, 
what we're going to do, we're going to start by activating Karis. Karis is going to pitch Kit here. Kit, on being sent to the graveyard, will trigger to Foolish Burial a Tri Brigade card from the deck. Now, normally in the combo, you would send the Oath here. We have to do a little differently. We have to send the Nerval because we need the search for the other Tri Brigade monster. So, we're going to add the Fractal. I'll be saying to yourself, what do we do now? Simple, we're going to Fractal Effect here. Fractal Effect, we're going to send Cobalt Sparrow. Now, we're going to be locked into Birds and Exceed Monsters this turn, which is fine. We're still going to be able to make the Utopia Draco and set with the Forbidden Droplet. What we can start to do here, though, first is go Karis, banishing three cards. So, we're going to banish the Fractal, we're going to banish the Nerva, we're going to banish the Kit. We need to keep the Cobalt Sparrow in Graveyard to get card advantage out of it. And we're going to summon the Samorg. This will let us end on Apex Avian. Now, we can go Barrel Canary. Barrel Canary will summon itself and the Cobalt Sparrow. Effective Cobalt Sparrow on summon to add a level 1 Wing Beast monster. What do we want to add? We want to add the Warbler. Actually, we're going to add the Wagtail, because that will give us Bird Call, which will then get us to the Warbler. So, right off the bat, we're going to go Recital Starling. Recital Starling will grab us a level 1 Wing Beast monster. The only change tonight is the Oath. We're playing with the Oath to show you guys how to play around the Droplet and the Dark Little More. Which are the only things you should ever be worried about. So, what do we want to add here? Well, we can't use the Warbler effect this turn because you have to have no monsters on the field to do so. But we have the Sapphire Swan, we've got the Wagtail. We want to prioritize in this moment adding the DD Crow. Another level of interaction for the following turn, and we're still going to make another Recite Starling. So, we're going to go Sapphire Swallow, summoning the Celestine Celest Wagtail. Wagtail on summon will grab us Bird Call from the deck. That's our follow-up for next turn. I'm going to summon Recite Starling. Recite Starling effect on summon. We're going to target the Samor to make it bigger so he cannot beat over it. What will this do? This will make it so the Samor cannot be destroyed by battle, most likely, during the opponent's turn. De detach the Wagtail. We're going to add the follow-up. We want to have the Nerval in hand for next turn. It'll be the first thing we're going to normal summon. Now we're going to bird call. Bird call effect, add what we don't have. We're going to want to prioritize another barrel canary here. It's going to give us the ability to play next turn because we're going to guarantee that we can make Nightingale with it. And we're going to do the typical F0 play. It's going to give us a monster negate anywhere on the field, graveyard hand, or banish pile. The critical piece to any of these combos is to make sure you have the Draco Future to back up against the Nibiru, against the Ash Blossom, against whatever other monster effects they may have that may be detrimental to the full end board. Again, this was a wonky opening hand. It wasn't ideal. But what are we ending on? We're still ending on a set droplet, a DD Crow in the hand, and we're going to have two negates. The monster negate from the Utopi Draco and the monster negate from the... Apex Avian, which will now be summoned off the Bird of Divinity. Sorry, Bird of Sovereignty, the Samorg Link Monster. It also cannot be targeted because it's being pointed to by the Samorg. So we play around the Imperm that way as well. I will have a written guide for the deck this weekend, guys. You will find it on the Discord. <laughs> Also, this video will be posted to my YouTube later tonight, so you can go back and refer to it at any moment. I'm going to, like I said, talk you through this, not only the combo lines, what I'm seeing with the active hands, but we're also playing against real people. This is not the bot. These are real people. I'm showing you the power of this deck at full force. I'm also telling you what the opponent is thinking in this moment. All right? Realistically, this is a board with at least four degrees of interaction. 
all right? For most decks, they can't play through that. This deck is one of the few that can play through multiple degrees of interaction with the right hand. He has to kaiju us here. Okay? It's the nature of things. And he has the magical meltdown. We know he's playing an invoked kaiju deck. He's likely playing a go second build. Terraforming here, likely searching Kaiju Waterfront. What he's going to try to do is make a big Gamma Seal. That's fine. He can Kaiju Waterfront us all he wants. The moment he summons the Alistair, we have to react, though. That is the critical part to this. So, Alistair hits the field. What do we do? We're going to negate with the Utopic Draco Future and take it. First one not buffed. Uh, mostly at the time, I was just trying to prioritize getting through the combo rather quickly. I want to play more duels tonight than we did last night because I want to only take a little bit to go over the Oath combo. I can also show you guys that line on Dueling Book as well. Show you exactly what it looks like uninterrupted. But you're right. We could have boosted the Samorg a little bit more. So, at this moment, we know he's got... No invocation to our knowledge. He also can't activate the invocation even if he wanted to. If he wanted to activate invocation, he has to summon something from the extra deck. Otherwise, he's got the Dogaran on field. Are we threatened at all? No. He has to crash into the Samorg link. He can't crash into the Utopic Draco Future because it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So what can he clear on our board realistically? The Radiant. The Karis. He's swinging into the Radiant. We're going to pass. Battle step. We're going to go into damage step. We're actually going to negate this. We're going to have the attack. We're going to pitch the Nerval. Nerval, when sent to the graveyard, will still trigger to add a tri Brigade monster next turn. We're going to add the Fractal. He's also going to lose the Kaiju here. And some Morgan in the end phase will summon out the Nerval again. And he scoops. There's no way you can... I'm telling you guys. This deck is crazy if it goes uninterrupted. But the reality is that you're going to be playing, quite frankly, interrupted versions because of the nature of it being a best of one. In the TCG, you see a lot of people not running interruption. Because A, they expect to go first, and they know that they've got games 2 and 3 to fall back on. We do not have that. So that's why we're talking about Oath tonight. Because people are main decking cards that want to go second. They're main decking cards like Lightning Storm. They're main decking cards like... Forbidden Droplet, and their main decking cards like Dark Ruler No More. Again, trying to showcase the Oath combo. We've yet to be able to do it yet tonight, but it is fairly simple. I will pull it up on Dueling Book as well for those who are unfamiliar with it, and you'll see it in action there. So we're going first. What does that tell us? That likely means that he's playing a go second list, or he let the timer run out because he wasn't paying attention. Now we open the Tri Brigade Oath. That does a lot for us. We're going to start by activating one for one, pitching the oath. We actually don't have to send the kit now. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll send the oath later. But what we're going to start by doing is sending the Nerval. Don't need the Nerval on hand at this moment. He's probably going to respond with an Ash. The Nerval will still search us a card. Be able to play through this. I'm going to DD Crow this. Okay, one last card here. That's fine. We're going to have the Warbler. We're going to add Warbler to. They're gonna be able to play. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna normal, we're gonna special summon the Nerval here. Then we're gonna normal summon the Cobalt Sparrow. We're gonna go plus two on this. He likely has a response. It immediately passed back to him. What does that mean for us? Well, it means two things. It was not activatable when we had no effect monster on field. So it's likely an infinite impermanence. What he's doing is he's just throwing this away. We can't even activate the Nerval right now. He's making a foolish mistake, and we're going to punish him for it. Nerval wasn't live. We don't have any monsters in the graveyard. He's throwing this away because he's not reading. So what are we going to do? We're going to Nerval here. We're going to use the Cobalt Sparrow. You take the Nerval. We're going to summon the Recite Starling. We don't have to activate the effect of Recite Starling on summon. It's not necessary. Now, it's passing... To him? Does he have anything? No. Pass right back to us. 
Grab here something. He scoops, he has nothing. Yep, exactly, DD. He had nothing, we had nothing in graveyard, he threw that away. Here we are, platinum tier 3. Goal is to get to tier 1 tonight. Playing this. So, what we would have done with that, alright guys, is we would have taken the Nerval, Prioritize then going for the Karis. And we also would have been able to resolve the Sparrow. It's going to be a crazy board. He didn't have anything. Looking at our hand here, we're going first. We've got full combo. We've opened Warbler, we've opened Fractal. We also opened the Celestine Wagtail. This is the ideal opening. We will be able to do Oath here if we go totally uninterrupted. At the moment, he has nothing. He's not chained Max C. He would have been able to chain the Max C to a guaranteed summon of the Warbler. So, we're not playing through Max C. We also know he doesn't have Ash. It passed immediately right back to us. He doesn't have Imperm. He would have done it the moment the Warbler was summoned. We've got the Bird Call. Here we're going to add, pay attention to this, we're going to add the Sapphire Swallow. And we do want to special summon a monster here. We're going to summon the other Warbler. Now we're going to start by going Recite Starling. Just using two monsters, you can use up to three. If not more, but we're only going two monsters here. We just need to detach one. We're going to search the Cobalt Sparrow. Detach the other Warbler. Cobalt Sparrow to the hand. Now, when a Sapphire Swallow summon the Sapphire Swallow and the Cobalt Sparrow, Cobalt Sparrow will add a level one Wing Beast monster on summon. What does that mean for us? We're going to grab the Nerval. Now we're going to go Recite Starling. Once again, Recite Starling effect. We're going to search the Barrel Canary. So we can end on the Ensemble Blue. We do not want to use either of their effects on summon because we want to be able to use the Sapphire Swallow later. We're going to detach the Sapphire Swallow. We're going to add the Barrel Canary. Where do we go from here? Like always, guys, we want to prioritize the F0. F0 will protect us against the major hand traps that are monster effects. We're looking to dodge Nibiru. We're looking to dodge Ash Blossom. In some cases, we are looking to dodge other monster effects that activate in hand. There's some crazy ones out there like Herald of Orange Light, which you will see in the Drytron deck later tonight if we decide to play that. So, you want to summon the F0 in attack position. You do not care about Lightning Storm with F0. It cannot be destroyed by card effects or by battle. And now your board is protected. So... What direction do we take here? Well, we have not normal summoned yet. We can normal summon the Nerval. Searching the Karis. And that is what we're going to do. So, we're going to go Nerval effect. Nerval's going to banish two. We're going to summon out the Fergit. We want to make sure not to banish the Swallow. We need to keep the Swallow in Graveyard. It's critical when we go to use Barrel Canary. So, somebody out the fair sheet. Now, you're going to use the fair sheet in the Nerval. You're going to summon out the Samort. But you're going to make sure to chain block the Nerval with the fair sheet. So, on summon of the Samort, you're going to go chain link 1, 2. You're going to make sure to activate the Nerval first. This way you can block it from being ashed. Blossom, on being sent to Graveyard, will draw a card. You look at your hand, you put one of the cards back. 
We don't want the Apex Avian in hand. That's going back in the deck. Nerve effect will not trigger. It will grab us the Keras from hand. Uh, from, uh, from deck. Now, because we opened the Fire Formation Tanky, this board gets even crazier. So we're going to go Fire Formation Tanky. Add the Fractal to hand. We need a card to pitch with the Karras, and we do not want to pitch the Barrel Canary. So we're going to go Karras Effect here. Sending the Fractal to Grave. Karras will summon over here next to the Draco Future. Karras Effect. It will banish two from the Graveyard. You know what? I'm going to banish three here. We're going to play this a little differently. We're not going to go for double Dragon Lords. We're going to go for Appaloosa. We're going for additional Monster Negates. I'm going to summon Doom Eagle. We're then going to summon Appaloosa using the Doom Eagle. And the Warbler on field. It's going to be two material Appaloosa. So it's going to go to 1600. That gives us two additional monster negates. What do we do from here? We're going to Fractal Effect. Send the, o send the kit. Then send Oath. Kit Effect on being sent to Graveyard. Foolish Barrel of the Oath. We're going to go Barrel Canary Effect. Barrel Canary Effect will target the Sapphire Swallow. You need to make sure that you target the Sapphire Swallow. When Sapphire Swallow is used to Exceed Material, you will be able to attach another Lyrical Monster to the Exceed Monster you summon. So this is going to be a 4 Material Ensemble when we are done. Because the Ensemble Blue will get an additional Material from the Sapphire Swallow. And then we will use the Wagtail Effect in Graveyard to target the Ensemble Blue to equip itself as a Material. So, as you see, we're going to attach the Warbler to the Ensemble Blue. There's our third material. Wagtail will now trigger. Wagtail will equip itself to the Ensemble Blue's material. And we're going to pass turn here. Yes, we have no cards in hand, but we're going to be summoning the Samori in the end phase. I mean, off the Samori, we're going to summon the Apex Avian. Now, how many degrees of interaction is this? This is one guaranteed degree of interaction from the Draco Future. It's two from the Appaloosa. It's full... It's becomes then the fourth one from the Apex Avian. So that's four Monster Negates, and this is four bounces off the Ensemble Blue. Anytime he special summons a monster during his turn with the... We can use the Ensemble Blue, detach a material, bounce it back to the hand. It's crazy. And on top of that, we have the Oath and Graveyard to protect us from the Dark Ruler, the Droplet, the Evenly Matched, the Lightning Storm. Whatever spell or trap card threatens our board, we have the Trivergate Oath to protect against that. This is what the pro players do, guys. This is the combo in the TCG right now that has made this the best deck to play. The only other deck in the TCG right now that holds a candle to this deck is the Sword Soul 10 e deck. But we can't play that because Master Duel does not have the Burst of Destiny card pool. So, what are we doing? We're playing the best deck. Now, Edo54 is sitting here. He's thinking to himself, how the hell do I play through this? He really doesn't. We're going to let this go through. Because we don't want to blow the Apex Avian Negate. Because we want to keep it for something that's a little bit more threatening. He can no longer draw cards this turn. You can play Pure Tri Brigade. Um, I think it's a lot weaker than this Booty Bear. Um, I think the Tri Brigade deck as a whole is a decent mid-tier deck. It's not bad for a beginner who's looking to get back into this game for the first time in a while, or someone who's looking to play a more budget-friendly deck. 
But if you want to make the, the pure Tri Brigade deck more competitive, you're going to have to shell out your gems and your crafting material. This, if you were to craft this deck right now, you know, the deck you see here on the side of the screen is a guaranteed tier one deck. I'm playing against Eldritch, okay. So he's going to threaten us with Curse Eld Land. He's going to try to search the Golden Lord here. That's fine, we let him. Actually, probably has a Golden Lord in hand already. So again, we're in cruise control, guys. If he tries to summon anything, Ensemble Blue is going to bounce it back to the hand. Golden Lord effect. He has to target a card on the field. What can he target? Well, he can't target the Samor. He can't target the Apex Haven. He cannot target the Ensemble Blue because of Samor's effect. Brytron, I think, is another Tier 1 deck, and we will be playing that tonight on stream. If you guys want me to, I have the deck built. I can go over combo lines with that deck as well and give a very in-depth analysis. I think this is actually Virtual World's biggest rival. Um, but yes, I think this is the deck to beat. Virtual World is very strong, but Virtual World is strong because of one card that is incredibly ban-worthy. That card is BFD. So, he is targeting the tanky. We're going to let that go through. So, he's trying a Golden Lord here. How do we respond? We're going to use an Appaloosinigate. Yeah, Booty Bear, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play Drytron tonight. Yeah, Drytron is a good deck. Drytron is inherently consistent. It's crazy. So, what happens now? Well, we want to make a Shurag. But we're going to wait. So. There's two cards right now that could screw us over here. There's an Elvish deck. It's going to play slow. The cards we need to look out for are there can only be one. That's the primary card we need to look out for. So we're going to go to the battle phase. We're going to try to bait this. If he tries to stop us, we have to make sure that we can swing with at least one Exceed monster. So that we can go into... Zeus. Rivalry of the Warlord. Send all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So we can only control one type of monster. What do we do? Well, we can send everything but the Apex Avian, the Samorg, and the Ensemble Blue. Seems like the best call to me. So, he's got something else that's chainable. If there's another card here that threatens, it's Goza Match. Goza Match isn't a problem. We're going to let that go through as well. We're fine with playing with only wind monsters. So, with rivalry, we want to keep wind monsters on field. Rivalry is going to trigger. We want to keep wing beast. We're willing to give up the Appaloosa because we're still going to be swinging for huge damage here. And then we can Zeus him. If we Zeus him, we're in total control, total driver's seat. We still have the Apex Avian negate. We still have four bounces. He's still in trouble. He's not out of the woods here. How long will it take to build a second deck? Uh, so let's see. I've, I've invested quite a bit of money. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I think in order to build a good deck here, guys... I, you're right. I can't summon Zeus because it goes in. But it doesn't matter. We had lethal anyway through that. So we're fine. Um, so what interaction made the fair sheet summon so not by the link? Or did I get that wrong? So Ferdy. Uh, so for Yu-Gi-Oh, what you want to do is you're using the Tri Brigade monsters to summon the Fergie without linking into it. The Tri Brigade monsters cheat out any Wing Beast, Beast Warrior, or Beast monster from the extra deck that is a Link monster. Um, you're right. We couldn't Zeus there. That's right. So how long would it take to build a second deck after this? I want to get to this question. If you play through the entire solo mode, you will get somewhere between ten to fifteen thousand free gems to do so. That may be enough, depending on which deck you're looking to build. That may be enough to build the entire deck. That's 
And that's if you haven't spent any money or you haven't spent your free signing up gems. You know, you get about 3,000 gems for signing up. You can do a lot with those 3,000 gems from signing up if you get lucky. It all comes down to luck at the end of the day, but you may have to spend some money. Now, it's not the end of the world because if you buy a card or if you craft a card, especially your staples, which I think everybody should prioritize getting cards like Maxi, Ash Blossom, and Forbidden Droplet, that's a one-time purchase if you think about it when it comes to your investment. You're never going to dismantle those cards. You're always going to need those three cards in particular. So prioritize building your staples first. You want to prioritize getting your Maxi. You want to prioritize building your Ash Blossom, your Droplet. Other staples, like one for one, really good card. Not necessarily in every deck, but something along those lines. You want to think about building those first. Zeus is a priority card, in my opinion, for the extra deck that you want to be crafting. And yes, I will share the deck list. Right, that's, that's what you want to do. The majority cards you want to craft are staples. So, we're looking at our hand here. We're going second. We have the Maxi and the Ash Blossom for pressure. He doesn't realize it. We're in the driver's seat. But it looks like we're playing into another back row heavy deck. Is this another Eldritch deck? Maybe. If it's Eldritch, we're fine because we have the Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. And it looks to me like it's another Eldritch deck. You're going to play a lot of Eldritch, people. It is a not very strong deck, but it is an easy deck to build. And people hate it themselves, so they play that deck. So what are we going to play into here? If he hits us with the goes to match... We just keep playing birds. Simple as that. It should be on my YouTube. Take a look for it if you can't. What are my thoughts on Sky Striker? I think Sky Striker is a strong deck, but Sky Striker has a high skill ceiling. There's a lot of interactions that may go over the average player's head. You need to make sure that you read your cards thoroughly and you understand the scenario. If you guys would like, I can dedicate one night this weekend to playing Sky Strikers as well. But later tonight, we're going to be playing Drytron. What is my YouTube name? It is the same as Twitch, but no underscore. Just search Charmander on YouTube. I have the Fractal to hand here. Now, we're not going to be able to Oath with his hand. It's going to pass back to him. It's going to pass back to us. What do we do here? We're going to Fractal Effect. I have a lot of actual TCG success with Sky Striker. So if you want to watch somebody play Sky Striker, it's a good channel to watch. I will be playing it on stream eventually. So, a couple things we want to do here. Fractal can send any of these. At this moment in time, what we want to do is we want to make sure we send the Cobalt Sparrow because we want to resolve the Turquoise Warbler. If Warbler goes through... We're golden. So, summon Warbler. Warbler on summon, if it's not immediately met with a Solemn Strike here, will summon out the Cobalt Sparrow from the graveyard, also adding a level 1 Wing Beast monster. We're going to get hit with Skill Drain here. We're playing into Eldritch. This is not good. We're not playing back removal because if I were in a competitive tournament, which is the way I've built this deck, I should not expect to play Eldritch. It's the reality of what we play. So, what do we do? We're kind of screwed. We don't really care so much because we can still play something and he can't get over it. So, we're going to risk the Pot of Desires here. We're not getting the Samorg. We're not getting the Apex Avian. It's not a priority here. And what we're going to play into likely is going to be a Goza match. Double Barrel Canary. Interesting. So, we're going to activate Barrel Canary effect here. We're going to summon out the Cobalt Sparrow from the graveyard. We're not going to get the effect like we just spoke about, but Barrel Canary will summon itself, and we're going to summon a Exceed Monster. Or we could just pass on this, which I think is actually the better play. It's just to sit on these three and hope we can draw onto something in the following turn. We're going to bait the Cobalt Sparrow, see if he falls for it. Nope. All right. So, what do we have here? Can't do anything. We're going to pass. You, you, you found my YouTube channel? Got the Scarlet Sanguine. We're going to chain Max C. It's going to be an upstart goblin. Oh, you can't. Okay. I think we're going to go next anyway, guys, because the reality is, is we shouldn't expect to play this in the ladder. I mean, we expect to play this in the ladder a lot. All right? But if you're sitting in an actual TCG tournament, I don't expect to go there and play Eldritch. I really don't.
So we're going to go next. We're not going to waste our time with this. Priority for tonight is showing you the combo. The combo is impossible to beat board. Yeah, Eldritch Synchro is legal in this game, but he is not playing Eldritch Synchro. He is playing Eldritch Floodgate, which is a deck if you hate yourself. Makes it so neither you or your opponent can really play. It is not fun. I do not encourage people to play it. I think it's a very degenerate strategy. I think because we're using a composite list with the TCG and the OCG, the fact that skill drain at three is a problem. I genuinely think skill drain should not be a three of card. I think cards that say that you cannot use one third of the entire card pool should not be allowed. Personally. So, we're going second. We've got the Maxi, we've got the Ash, we've got the Cobalt Sparrow, we have the Burkle, we have the Forbidden Droplet. This is a perfect going second hand. And we're playing Eldritch again. Jesus. Pot of Prosperity here. We're going to negate this. I don't necessarily know if this is Eldritch. This, this could be invoked. No. But most decks can't. If they set up like that where they have the skill drain and he likely had that there can only be one set, there's no way we can play through it and you're not going to see many other decks be able to play through it. Drytron cannot play through that. You're also not going to see Virtual World play through that. Virtual World could slowly over time dwindle it away with a Chuche, but the reality is that the Eldritch player will be able to set the Conquistador eventually popping the Chuche or they can use the Eldritch in hand to send the Chuche. There's really no way around the skill drain unless you're willing to main deck Twin Twister. But going first, Twin Twister does nothing. And we are playing a deck that strictly wants to go first. He's playing Trap Trick. Okay. So, two things we can do here. I think we priority Max C. We don't want him getting Trap Trick Sarah. What he's going to do is he's going to add Dianea to hand here. On the add of Dianea, he's probably going to likely pass turn. But we're preemptively maxing to prevent him to get from Trap Trick Sarah. If Trap Trick Sarah gets on the field, if he starts activating other base, starts activating non continuous or counter traps, just normal trap cards, Trap Trick Sarah will summon a Trap Trick monster from the deck and likely trigger its effect on field, thus also triggering her other effect to set a trap hole card from the deck. Makes it difficult to play through. By doing that, we're drawing a card here. He's making a mistake by summoning the Sarah anyway, knowing that he's under max C. He is giving us a free card. The little things to pick up on. Top deck Tri-Brigade Oath. This is really good. Why do we play Tri-Brigade Oath now? Well, for instance, we have Forbidden Droplet. If we activate Forbidden Droplet right now, he can't respond with a trap card because we would send the O to the graveyard. So, I'm thinking we do that. We're going to Bird Call here. Does he have anything? He's passing priority to him. Nothing. Okay, so Bird Call will go through. We're going to add the Cobalt... We're going to... Sorry, we're not going to add the Cobalt Sparrow. We're going to add the Warbler to hand. We are then going to special summon. Yes, Oath is a new addition, but this is how the pros play it. If you were to go to a TCG event tomorrow, you would see, tri you would see the Lyric Tri Brigade deck with the Oath. The Oath plays around the droplet. It plays around other cards. Oath is crazy, guys. Yes. So, because we will be pitching the Oath at one point in this combo... We will be able to negate one of these cards. We've got the Warbler in hand. What do we do? Well, I want to have the Nerval. I am Plat. This is Plat 3, guys. So Oath will counter Skill Drain, yes. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to one for one here. We're going to one for one pitching the Turquoise Warbler. Reason being, we're going to summon out likely another war, likely another Nerval here. Nerval's going to get the ball rolling. He's not going to be able to know necessarily what to do. So, we're going to summon the Nerval from the deck. 
And if we exceed summon right here, we're in good shape. Now, we're playing to go second. I'm actually going to prioritize the Zeus here. I'm not going to do anything else. We're going to go Nightingale. Nightingale will swing directly for two. Swing directly twice. Nightingale will then become a downer magician, and we will get two Zeuses out of this. We also then have the Nerval as the follow-up. So, he's got the Floodgate Trap Hole. Sure. But we're also, what we're going to do here is we're going to chain the Forbidden Droplet. And we're going to send the Tri Brigade Oath to the Graveyard. We're going to turn off the Trap Trick Sarah. He will not be able to special summon a monster off the Trap Trick Sarah now. Not going to work, bud. So, now what? We're going to normal summon the Nerval. Passes back to him. Full scenario evacuation device. Rough news. Tough. We're playing to go second. Not much we can do there. So, what are we going to do? We're going to pass. So, what his turn will likely be, guys, is this. He's probably going to normal summon the Dianea he had in hand from last turn. On normal summon, Dianea will target a Trap Trick monster in the graveyard, special summon it, and at the same time, in a new chain link, trigger the Trap Trick Sarah to set a Trap Hole card from the deck to the field. This is problematic for us. We likely can't play through this now. But we're going to try. Nerval's got a big defense. We may still be able to play through this. So, he's setting the bottomless trap hole. That's fine. Depends what rank 4 play he goes into here. That is the critical part. If he goes into a card like Baguska, we're in trouble. If he goes into a card like Tornado Dragon, we are not in such a problem. If he goes into a card like Abyss Dweller, it's a slight problem, but it's manageable. So it depends what he goes into here. The right play would be to go into Baguska. Instead, he's going into Trap Tricks for Felicia. Trap Tricks for Felicia. On the summon of a monster, will Foolish Burial a Trap Hole card from the deck. Copy its effect. So what does that mean? That means he could Floodgate us from the deck. It means he could Gravedigger Trap Hole from the deck. It also means that he could Bottomless Trap Hole us from the deck. Attacking into the Cobalt Sparrow. That's fine. So, we're drawing a card here. We have two interruptions we know to play through. The Bottomless Trap Hole cannot touch the Nerval. Because Bottomless Trap Hole cannot respond to monsters summoned with 1,500 or less attack. We're going to normal summon the Nerval. He has his toggle turned off. Or he doesn't have... A monster, a, a, a trap hole in the deck that he can respond with. So we're going to Nerval here. Two, two cards. We're going to go Ancient Warriors here to bait. So we're going to go plus two here. And I'll explain why. On summon, he's going to go bottomless trap hole responding to this. We're going to chain the Ancient Warriors. We're going to send the set Nerval on the field, guys. Make sure to send the set Nerval on this case. And we're going to bounce the Rafflesia back into the extra deck. What does this do? This is going to give us a Nerval search. He's chaining the Rafflesia. He doesn't know what he's chaining the Rafflesia to.
It does nothing. You can negate the effect. So the Rafflesia will not go back into the extra deck now. That's fine. We're going to lose the Ancient Warrior's Oath. We're also going to be able to get the Nerval in a new chain link. And we still lose anyway because I did not read this card. Never seen this card before in my life. Just one random card from their hand. We should have chained then. Should have chained the maxi. Would have given us a playable hand. We're going to go next. Again, these trap decks. Trap Tricks is not a tier deck. It's got pesky matchups. You see it creep back in at the beginning of formats as a rogue deck. So again, we did the Tri Brigade Oath combo earlier. That's what we're trying to replicate. In the TCG, because there is no Max C, this is the best deck. You have to remember that. Max C puts a lot of pressure. Puts a lot of pressure into deck building. We're going to go first. This is two games in a row that we've decided. So uh, I'm going to break down what tiers mean. So tiers in Yu-Gi-Oh, when you're talking about the meta game, refer to a deck's success in actual tournaments that are Konami sanctioned and covered. What does that mean exactly? Well, that means if I go to a tournament, I should expect to see X deck here and there because I know it's this strong because it's topped this many events. That means that when it goes to top cut, the top 32 players in that event are playing this deck in this percentage. Tiers are based on percentage. Tier 1 decks share 15 or more percent of the top cut. Tier 2 decks share 8.5% of the top cut. Tier 3 decks, which are very rare, share less than 3% of the top cut. And there are decks on occasion that will top, that are unexpected, that fall into the rogue category. Rogue decks, you should not expect to go into an event and see frequently. You should expect that they may occur, and it's likely that it happens. So, don't expect to go into a deck expecting to play a deck like uh, an event like... A YCS expecting to play Trap Tricks. What you should expect to be playing are the decks that people are talking about. And the decks that people are talking about are going to be this. It's going to be Drytron. It's going to be decks like Prank Kids. It's going to be decks like Virtual World. That's the reality of this. Now, there's a lot that can happen right here. We're going to go Max C. We're playing against the Scry Striker deck. He has to link summon here. Otherwise, his entire deck is dead and we win next turn. He has to go into a Sky Striker link here. Sky Strikers require you to have no monsters in the main monster zone in order to activate the spell cards. At the moment, he has a monster in the main monster zone. If he sets any card here, it's safe to assume it is not a Sky Striker card. Unless he assumes that we are going to clear the rows. We had an unfortunate open in hand. He had the ash in response to our pot of desires. We're going to take a look at what we banished. Banished two bird calls. That's a consistency killer. We're going to draw a card here. He's going Shizuku. This is a mistake. But he has to do it. He has the mecha multi roll. This is actually a problem card. This card is at one in the TCG because it is so strong. What he will be able to do here is because the Shizuku was summoned this turn, it will add a Sky Striker spell card that is not presently in his graveyard. And if he has a quick play spell, he could activate it and set it then off the multi roll from the graveyard. So, top deck Tri Brigade Oath. We're having a rough time tonight. We're going to start by going Barrel Canary. Barrel Canary is going to summon Sapphire Swallow. Looks like he has a response. Nothing that he wants to chain to immediately. We're going to summon. Now, we're locked into Exceed Monsters. So, what do we do? Well, I'm going to normal summon the Nerval. We're going to make as big a Zeus as we possibly can. We're going to go Assembled Nightingale. Because we summoned it with the Barrel Canary, he cannot target our card. We're going to go Battle Phase here. We're going to force the envelope by attacking three times directly for 800. We're going to do 2400 damage, and then we're going to summon a Downward Magician and then go Zeus. So, Sacred Deity, if you want to talk about what's a Tier 1 deck right now, it's Lyseric, 
Cry Brigade, and it is Sword Soul in the TCG. Anything else you can consider below it a tier 2 or tier 3 deck. I would put in that category Virtual World, and I would put Drytron in tier 2. In tier 3, I would put Fa Phantom Knight. Phantom Knight has a serious problem, though, where it cannot hang with the other big dogs in the format because of a card like Protoss. Protoss is a win condition for a lot of decks, especially the Sword Soul deck, or Protoss like cards. So we're going to summon the Downer Magician here. Downer Magician is huge. There's nothing he can respond with here. He's in trouble. How do you counter Drytron with this deck? You go first. <laughs> you also play the Forbidden Drop to play around the Heralds. But if they go first and you do not have the Maxi or the Ash Blossom, you're in trouble. And that's how the format is shaping up. So what are we going to do? We're going to threaten here. We're going to threaten the Zeus. Zeus is going to detach. Now make sure to detach the Nerve All here so we have a play for next turn. We're going to send his entire field, unless he has the Widow Anchor. He has the Eagle Booster. We're not going to ch chain Zeus again. Zeus is going to send everything on the field except for the Eagle Booster. I'm sorry, except for the Shizuku, which is fine. We're going to trigger the Nerve All effect. What did we send here? Well, we sent a... Eagle Booster, we sent a second multi-roll. We know he has the engage in hand. That is a problem. But it's one that's manageable. So we're going to have to fractal the hand. And we're going to bluff and we're going to set the Tri-Brigade Oath. Remember, we cannot summon Link Monsters. So we're not going to even try. So Zeus is going to threaten. It's going to buy us another turn. We have to threaten the Zeus here because we're going to lose it off the jamming waves. Not expecting him to rip into a top deck jamming waves. Again, we're opening suboptimal hands and we're playing going second. It's unfortunate. It's how it is. And the Sky Striker mobilize engage. He's going to search a Sky Striker card here. And because he has three or more spell cards in grave, he's also going to draw a card. So he's searching the Sky Striker Ace Ray. Ray has a quick effect. It will tribute itself or cost special summon a Sky Striker monster from the extra deck. Likely what he is going to do here, guys, is he is going to go Link Summon using Ray as a Link 1. Summon Sky Striker Ace Kigari. Kigari effect on summon will add the engage from graveyard to hand. He will then be able to engage again. He's going to go plus 2 on this. Sky Striker is really good at generating advantage. But it does not have kill potential. There's no lethal version of Sky Striker. It takes several turns to get to lethal. He's going to add the Widow Anchor here. Electing to not go for the multi-roll when he should have added the multi-roll. So what is he going to do? He's likely going to Widow Anchor, possibly taking the Zeus. Or he's going to go Hayate here and send a monster. Hayate can attack directly. If it successfully declares battle and does damage calculation, it will Foolish Burial any Sky Striker card from the deck so he's electing to let us keep the Zeus what did he send off the Hayate well take a look he sent a second Ray gonna summon Shizuku Shizuku again in the end phase will search a card that he does not presently have in the graveyard There's a lot that he can search going to set the card. This is Widow Anchor. One of these cards is Widow Anchor. I do not think Kaiser Coliseum is good in Sky Striker. So he's searching the Widow Anchor. We know he has that for next turn. Now, we know we have to play through one Widow Anchor. DD Crow. Keep drawing the one-ofs. Not good. We need to get our combo going again. And we're not going to be able to play through this. I know that for a fact. So we are a little bit shit out of luck again. I think we're just going to go next. I think we're going to switch decks in a bit. But what I'm going to do one more time beforehand is I'm going to try to do the combo once again. Show you guys what the pro level combo is with the Tri Brigade Oath. Again, we keep having the reality of having to go second. We want to go first. 
The build that I'm showing you today is what the pros play. It goes first. The difference between this deck and the pro deck is that we don't have access to the max C. The max C is supposed to allow us to go second, but we keep playing against decks that are not special summoning a whole lot. They're setting five cards and passing. It's the unfortunate reality of the ladder. There's not a big tier system here. Higher tiered play would not see this. So we open the Tri Brigade Oath. We open the Forbidden Droplet. We open the Karis. What's the play here? Don't have one. Don't have a play with this hand. Statistically, this should not happen. It's a 40% chance to see three of cards. Kit, Karis, and Oath are one of cards. That means it was a 40% chance to open any one of these cards, and we opened three of them. It's a statistical anomaly. This should not have happened. It happens, though. We can still have a play. We can go Karis Effect, pitch the kit from the hand. Kit on Foolish Burial will add a Tri Brigade monster. I'm oh, sorry, well, Foolish Burial, a Tri Brigade card, which we will then Foolish Burial, Nerval. Nerval will add us the Fractal. It's going to be met with an Ash Blossom here. So, yeah, we have been breaking a lot tonight. Algorithm does not like me. Yeah, and one of the three of us was Max E. This has been a very unlucky hand. It does happen. Bricks happen. Part of the reason why this deck is not tier one, guys. Because it does brick. We're okay. We have the Max E. We have Forbidden Droplet. We're going to send the Oath. We have the Oath follow-up for next turn. We have two degrees of interruption. Planet Pathfinder. It yeah, could build a house with these bricks for sure. Planet Pathfinder. Tribute itself. Add a field spell from deck to hand. We don't have to worry about it being Mystic Mine. That's a benefit. It's going to be Numeron Network. Interesting. This deck is, in fact, Tier 1. There's no doubt about that in my mind. This is a Tier 1 deck. Numeron Calling. We're chaining Max C here. He's copying the effect of Numeron Calling with the Numeron Network. He's going to summon four times here. He's going to chain Ash Blossom. Wow. This man has everything. Oh, I meant to say tier zero. Guy has a god hand. Jesus. Ugh. Just running into the absolute craziest stuff on the ladder tonight. Numerons are cheap. They're an OTK deck, and we lose anyway. Wow. Yeah, God, this is this has been a meme stream so far. I think we played against like every meme combo deck. You're right. Once we go first, we seem to brick. <laughs> so. Our turn, Wagtail. Hey. Odds are, is he can Numeron combo us again next turn. We're gonna pass. We're gonna we're gonna go next. We're gonna play one more of this, and then we're gonna switch to Drytron. Drytron is a far, it, it, you know, it, it's close in its strength overall. I've got a, yeah, we're not going <laughs> Wagtail beat down with zero. <laughs> um, Drytron is also a very similar play style. The idea. You use your Drytron monsters, tribute ritual monsters, or other Drytron monsters in the hand to special summon the Drytron monster and inherently grab another card. You're tributing Cyber Angel Ben 10. Ben 10 in the Drytron deck will search you any fairy monster. The idea with the Drytrons is you want to build a protect the castle style strategy to then OTK the following turn. You want to protect Herald of Perfection. Yeah, ben 10 is crazy. The fact that it's at 3 in this game with this ban list is also wild. 
Almirage wouldn't have done anything us for us there. Normal summoning Wagtail, going Almirage does nothing. P opponent setting one card. We do have full combo in hand if that is only if that is the only interruption. Wow. Perfect card to draw. So we're gonna go bird call. Hopefully this baits the ash. If he has it. Passes priority to him. He has something. Likely going to be Ash here. Or he is the Max C. It's Max C. We're going to set one monster. We're going to pass. Having the two Max C. Why use Doom Eagle? You use Doom Eagle to snipe the pesky stuff out of the graveyard. Got the Ash for the bird call. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to normal summon the Sapphire Swallow. Then use the Sapphire Swallow effect in hand to summon the Cobalt Sparrow out. He cannot respond with that unless he has Psy Frame Gamma. It passed priority to him. He has something that's activatable. My guess is it's either a max C, an infinite impermanence, or an effect failure. Because it was activatable the moment we summoned a normal uh, an effect monster. It was not activatable prior to that. So, again, we're going to Cobalt Sparrow here. With the Sapphire Swallow, Cobalt Sparrow on summon will add a level 1 Wing Beast monster from deck to hand. We're not going to add the Nerve All here because we're out of our normal summon range. Because we had to normal summon the Sapphire Swallow, so we're going to add the Barrel Canary if this successfully goes through. Wrenchal Tribute. Well, <laughs> weird just keeps getting weirder. That's fine. So, we went second. What does that mean for us? It means two things. We're going to start fighting the Turquoise Warbler. He cleared our board. Little things you can look up at. He cleared our board with the Torrential Tribute. Turquoise Warbler can now activate both of its effects. Not only to special summon itself from the hand, but also to grab one back from the graveyard. So, what are we going to do? We're going to use Turquoise Warbler. Yeah, you change Rendezvous with Oath. I wasn't playing Rendezvous the other night or the night before. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to recite Starlight. We're going to do our normal combo. We're going to go into the Draco Future. And we're also going to grab the Barrel Canary and make the big Ensemble blue. Or we could also go for Zeus, because this is turn two. So, recite Starling. I'm going to use the effect, detach. Grab the Barrel Canary. But I think we just go Draco Future. It's a safer play. Barrel Canary effect, target a Steric monster. What about talking for one share egg? You can do that if you so choose, guys. This is the list that I think is optimized for a true meta. And what I mean by true meta is one that I expect to take this to a tournament and play with. So, I don't expect to go to a tournament and play a lot of Eldritch. I expect to go to a tournament and play a lot of Drytron, play a lot of Virtual World, play a lot of this deck. I expect to play a lot of Mirrors. Those three decks in particular are the ones that I expect to play if I were to take this to a tournament tomorrow. I would not expect to play Eldritch. That's why we're not playing any back removal. But if we are playing a tournament, we would have a side deck specifically built to counter the Eldritch with cards like Red Reboot, with cards like Feather Duster, cards like Twin Twister, to play around the heavy back row strategies. So if you feel that maybe the access code is better, then play the access code over the second Shurag, or the other flex spot in the extra deck could be the Doom Eagle. So what are we going to do? We're going to add the Nerve All to hand for next turn. And what we're going to do now is we are going to go F0, F0, then use it to summon F0, Utopia Draco Future. We're going to have the monster negate. Saves us a lot. We've got the max C is pressure as well, too. He realizes that because it keeps passing Hourglass back to us, even as turn player priority. When he says he has nothing, it doesn't go chain resolve. It says, do we want to resolve something? AKA chain max C. And then it passes back and boom. So we're going to battle here. We're going to swing directly for 3,000. He's got something. Do you have a battle trap? Does he have a card like Battle Fader? With Scarecrow. He may have also turned the toggle on to try to troll us. A lot of people do that. You can turn the toggle on. You can sit here for four minutes, not do anything. Your opponent thinks he might have something. All you have to do is keep clicking on the screen. It won't make you auto-surrender. 
So he could just be trolling us because he realized he has nothing. He set one pass. It was for fire. It was just the torrential tribute. We knew he plays Ash Blossom. Do you remember what game it was with the full combo? I'm going to try to make that a separate video. Make that the prize video with the combo and do the commentary on later. So we're going to go main phase two. We're not going to make the Zeus here, although we could get a two material Zeus. I think it's better to keep the Draco future. This is a monster gate. Also gives us a take. He can't clear this with card destruction or by battle. The Zeus, he could imperm and then suddenly clear it. You'd have to imperm and then use another card. Clear this same situation with Zeus, but we want to keep the Zeus because we have the Nerve Ball. We likely will be drawing cards this turn because we have the Maxi in hand. Yeah, I'm going to do a video just for the combo. I'm going to cut this down later. I think we're going to play two more games. So this is going to count as game two. And then we're going to play another game. And then we're going to switch to Drytron about 9 o'clock. Playing Shadals. So, he's summoning the Squamata. Squamata, summoning the Hat Tricker. Okay. Where do we see this going? This is a rank 4 play. And a chain here. Going to put pressure on him. He's likely going to pass turn. Yep. Like I said. Stop the combo right then and there. We can attack the Squamata with full confidence. Got DD Crow. Our hand is cooking. We've got everything we need to combo here. So, what are we going to do? We're going to go Nerval. Nerval effect. We're going to banish four cards. We're going to go for the Sherag play here. So, we're going to banish one, two, three, and four. We want to keep the Sapphire Swallow in hand for later in case we draw into a Barrel Canary because that'll give us more materials to equip. So, summon out the Sherag here. Shirag on summon of a wing beast, beast warrior, or beast monster, or itself will banish a card with a non-targeting removal. This is really good for getting around stuff. In the TCG, this is used to play around Dragoon. This is used to play around cards because your opponent has to chain then and there or else they risk losing their most prized card on the field. So, Hat Tricker, we can easily clear this. Bulmana, we can easily clear that too. We don't have to do anything because he's scooping. You realize he has nothing. Break of Future was just to negate anything if he had a response to this. So, we're going to play one more of this, and then we're going to switch to Drytron. But, as you can see, on average, this deck controls the tempo. We didn't even have a great hand. We were still able to put a lot of pressure, which is the Max C and the Draco Future. We're going first again. Try to do the full combo, and then a high note. I'm going to get an in-depth analysis of the Drytron deck that we're going to play next as well on stream, guys. So I'm going to sit here for a few minutes explain to you the tech choices in that Drytron list. So we're going to start by playing the Bird Call. We have full combo in hand. He has nothing. We passed priority. We got the activation immediately. So what do we do? We're going to Sapphire Swallow. And we go some more with just Foolish Burial. There's lines of play to do that. Yeah. There are lines of play to do that. Um, what you do is you Fractal, or um, actually, you, you have to Fractal. You can't use Foolish Burial. So Fractal Effect will send itself, then Foolish Burial Kit, Kit will send Nerval to add one. Yes, you should always banish the Tri-Brigade monsters in your graveyard first. So, we want to summon the Warbler from hand. Warbler from hand, on summon, because it was summoned from the hand, will trigger special summoning one from hand. The combo play around Nibiru, yes, because you prioritize the F0. Because you prioritize the F0, they have to Nibiru on the recital Starlings, but you're still getting the card advantage. And 
with the ideal combo, you have not used your normal summon yet, so you still have follow-up plays for even after you Nibiru. Those follow-up plays will be the following things. You'll have the Ensemble Blue, you'll have the Samorg, and you'll have the Double Dragon Lords if you did the combo right. Because if he waits too late and you summon the F-Zero, he cannot Nibiru. So he has to Nibiru before you go for the Utopic Draco, you know, the F-Zero I'm referring to. So Cobalt Sparrow on summon will add a level 1 bird monster. What are we going to add here? Well, we're going to add the Nerval. We're in the driver's seat here. We have the perfect hand. We're not going to be able to grab the Oath here. At least not immediately. We're going to have to see how this hand shapes up. So we're going to go resettle Starling. Resettle Starling. Detach the material. Add a level 1 Wing Beast monster. Yeah, you always try to go F0 first. That is the ideal big monster you summon out first. So we're going to go Recital Starling here. Recital Starling, detaching the Turquoise Warbler, you add the Sapphire Swallow from deck to hand. Sapphire Swallow, if you control a face-up Wing Beast monster, you can special summon itself and one other level 1 Wing Beast monster from your hand to the field. So, what do we summon here? We're going to summon I think we're going to summon the Nerval here. And here's why. Absolutely. It's what I'm here for. I want to see you guys succeed. I want to see people having fun playing this game. So, here's the combo. Alright, super simple. Because we open the one for one, it changes our hand drastically. We can play around Nibiru and then some. We're not afraid of Nibiru now. We're going to go Recital Starling. Recital Starling is going to make sure to detach the Nerval here. When it activates its effect. You want to detach it because you're going to go plus two off this. So, detach the Nerval. Okay. You're going to want to add the Barrel Canary to hand. And then the Nerval will search a Tri-Brigade monster from the deck. We want to add the Fractal to hand. This enables the Oath. We don't need the Karis play now. So, we got the F-Zero. We've played around the Nibiru. We don't have to worry about Nibiru anymore. What do we do? We're going to go one for one. The pitch. The wagtail. Summon the, the Nerval. Now, we're going to use the Nerval Banishing 2 from the graveyard. We, at this point, any two cards, but you want to make sure you leave a baby, and you want to make sure you leave the wagtail. So we're going to banish the Warbler and the other Nerval from the graveyard. We want to leave the Sparrow because the Barrel Canary will give us a second material. So, we're going to go Baron Blossom here. Now what? Well, talked about it earlier. We could go Farajit Effect, Special Summon 1. We don't have to. So we're just going to go some more here. Okay? We want to keep the Fractal in hand. Fractal will allow us to send the Oath if we choose to go that route. At the moment, we cannot summon a beast monster, so we need to hope that the draw off the Farajit is what we need. A lot of desires. Not bad. So we're not going to go the Oath play here because we don't have the access to the Kara, so we're going to keep the Pot of Desires. Barrel Canary right here. We've done the full combo to this point and to the best of our ability. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an Ensemble Robin. Robin's going to have four materials here because we're going to do this correctly. So, we're using the Barrel Canary, targeting the Sapphire Swallow in the graveyard. When Sapphire Swallow is used as material for an Exceed Summon of a Lyseric Monster, you are going to be able to equip another monster from the graveyard with Lyseric in its name to it as Exceed material. That will trigger here. We're going to add the Warbler. The Wagtail will also equip to it because that has an effect in the graveyard. So we're going to activate the effect of Wagtail. Going to equip to the Ensemble Blue Robin. Okay? 
Boom. Four material ensemble blue robin. We've got the Draco future. We're going to go to the end phase here. End phase Samorg will summon out the Apex Avian the field, which is an Omni negate. It can negate anything, a monster spell or trap card, and it will bounce itself back to the hand in the process of doing so. Neither of these three cards on the right side of our screen right now can be targeted because of the Samorg link, so we play around the infinite impermanence that way. We play around targeted removal that way. We've got four really big monsters. The one thing we do have to worry about with this combo is we have to worry about the Lightning Storm, or the Forbidden Droplet, or the Dark Ruler no more. But, unlike the Droplet and the Dark Ruler no more, the Apex Avian will play around that. We'll be able to negate the Lightning Storm, protecting our field. The Draco Future cannot be destroyed by card effects or by battle. We've talked about that in the past. So it's safe from the Lightning Storm already, but the Ensemble Blue and the Sovereignty cannot. But if Ensemble Blue is sent to the graveyard because of an opponent's card, we'll be able to add one in the graveyard. Opponent realizes he can't play through this. That is the power of this deck. You see people do the full combo, the opponent will just scoop immediately. All right? So I'm going to end the stream here on the Lucyric deck. I hope you guys have enjoyed the gameplay for this, and we're going to switch to Drytron now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream. Sorry, not end the stream. I'm going to end the recording.